Hello folks, welcome back to Big Derp Gaming. Uh, we're back with Torment. And after last time, we've got a real simple goal for today. We're gonna get two things done. Okay. And we're gonna do it quickly. <laughs> it's not gonna take an hour. My goodness. Okay, we still have to do that. We can do that. I don't know if I want to do that yet. I think I left. I, I can be looking for that. I want to find a way to help this escape, so I'm going to continue asking around here. And. Oh, I've got to go. And I know how to get to the, the government district. As you wish. Okay, so. Let's. All right. No, not the coldest. Not the hawkers. Right. There's got to be somebody in the area. Who's that? Let's. All right, we'll talk to this guy. The large and muscled man is practicing some sort of martial art as you look on. He's wearing an old white, rough woven coat with the sleeves torn off and a red bandana wrapped tightly around his head. Seems to be moving much faster than his size suggests as possible. He glides between stances as swiftly as water. His fists are blurring hammers, striking at invisible enemies. His bare, callous feet snap and slash at the air like knives. Where did you learn to fight like that? By challenging the deadliest creatures and studying their killing blows. I lack claws or teeth, but I do the best I can. You're very fast. Yes. The Dribble's Gift. His hand slips around an invisible assailant's arm, snaps it with a stab of his elbow, then crushes his enemy's throat and flips him over the shoulder to the ground. Just at the moray, he shouts, spinning over the invisible answer, adversary's corpse to deliver a triangle of jabs to the chest of his next attacker. The entire move took no longer than four seconds. He catches you staring and smiles. You must be wondering why I'm shouting. Sure, yeah, I guess so. I'm not surprised I'm much like a lunatic, he says before spearing his opponent's ugly with three fingers. Candid thrust. It helps me focus my breathing, my strength, my will. It reminds me of how weak I once was and how strong I've become. Years ago, I was a starving beggar. Managed to steal a wedge of a pie crust and was terrified that someone else would take it from me. So I hid inside that metal structure over there to enjoy my, heath, my feast. Bite of the hidden queeb. The stale crust crumbled into pieces beneath my eager fingers, and something strange happened. They drifted towards the ground like the soft snowflakes. I was able to pluck each of them from the air before they fell. At first I was delighted, then I wept. How far I'd fallen that a clean food was a miracle. He sighs and delivers four more blows. But the miracle never ended. The longer I lived in that shelter, the more I could slow the world by concentrating. I swore I'd never, to never waste this gift. I would honor it by becoming stronger faster. I would challenge the predators of the world and take their killing blows from them. I would never be prey again. Grush stomp. Sure. This can't hurt. Um, You're not the first to think so, he says casually, snapping in a sailor's neck. I should worry that all the others are dead, but it's not a threat. I only fight to the death. Before I accept your challenge, I need to see if you're good enough to face me. Jarvis kissed. A slow punch first. Some challenges are braggers, but they don't deserve death. I don't want to fight him, actually. I'm, I'm now totally afraid so I'm going to flinch. I'm wussing out. There's no shame in knowing your limitations. Cool. Okay, that's not what I was there for. Getting sidetracked again. Loss of self? Is this, this person's name? The young woman clutches herself and growls low and continuously under her breath. Pearly white light shimmers from a vial on her wrist and her eyes are red rimmed as if she's been crying You've never seen her before and yet your hands are sweating and your breath catches in your inherited chest shame burns in your throat hot and sour your body recognizes her even if you do not scan thoughts this isn't you only I am real you don't need to fight me leave me alone she mutters and it's a moment before you realize she's not talking to you you take my face stole my family whisper me in my own voice isn't that enough isn't that she breaks off when she sees you. She's in my head, and she won't shut up. Shut up, talk louder, talk over her so I can hear you. You hear a woman in your head. Yes. 
she says, biting the world like an enemy. So now stop talking about her. It brings her forward and she clings. She whines and she won't stop. So please stop talking about her. I'm not some woman I am you. Please let me in. I kind of want to hear about it. I'm sorry, I want to hear about it. No, every time I think about her, she's exclusive to me. Pulls my arm. Stop asking about her, please. So, sir, you want to let me in? Why fight me? What's the shining object? She flinches but reveals the vital vial strapped to her wrist. It glows with an inner light and the tiny ripples seem to cast moving shadows on her palm. I woke up one night in a building I've never seen before. I found this beneath a pile of blackened scales. If you shake it, it makes a picture. Watch. She juggles the vial and holds up her other hand. Indistinct shadows mimic the motion on her palm. I don't want to steal it from her. Why are you holding on to it? Because I feel like it was mine. She blurs the grimaces of the word escape without her position. At any rate, it's mine now. I don't need any more reason than that. Ask about something else. Alright. I'm not going to go deeper on the little way in your head. That's not why I'm here. I'm trying to get this dumbass stickus out of this area. Yes. Uh, okay, let's try this guy. He's the only named guy I haven't spoken to. The old man's skin is covered in makeup paint that he drawn to remember Darkstone. His eyes widen briefly as he notices you, and his face and neck harden to the actual obsidian for a moment, and then he smiles and nods to you. His features mobile once more. Welcome, welcome. Sorry about the stone. Probably for flesh modification. You see, I didn't see you walk up, and I assumed you were going to cut my throat and take my turn of party for yourself. Why would you sneak such a thing? I do good business here. If I were a younger man looking to make a name for myself in the city, I'd kill me too. My chirurgical parlor is a marvel of the prior world, you see. Just pick an item or service, pay my regular fa fees, and only after a short to long period of fairly safe but indescribable agony, you walk away with some horrible Numenera bits whirling away inside of you. He pokes a few buttons on the device strapped to his wrist, light wrist and lights twinkle across his length, a dark glassy lens focuses on you well interested um I can't help noticing you're very honest well spotted he says clear streaks of course right up his prominent cheekbones revealing the muscle beneath it's a side effect of my modifications couldn't lie to you too if you begged me to honesty is usually a hindrance to a businessman but people seem to like it in my, it's a blessing in my opinion how'd you come to own the place it was originally a partnership. My colleagues and I spent two years digging out the whole thing and getting a mess, getting the whole mess working. Of course, we had to test the drones before we tried them on anyone else. Customers getting skinned alive. On opening day is bad for business. Turns out that was a wise move. Cornat chose an intelligence modification, and the drones cut off his head to work on it more directly. Mere pig strength, and the drones sliced off her arms. They'd have faulted to sever in those days. Smell strongly. Anyway, six partners later, I was the sole proprietor. I worked with the kinks, and here we are. With no fatalities in months. No fatalities in months. The stronger survived. Of course, it might not have been me, but, well, it was. Okay, I don't want to buy nothing, and you don't Look seem to be, be somebody who's going to help me. Sideways. Um, I didn't talk to these two. I only talked to this one. I think, no. Okay, then. Maybe we will not be helping the stickers. I guess we can go in the tavern. That makes that that tracks. At very least we might find some other easier to accomplish mission. Dear God. It's not happening again. It's not going down again. Why is it like blurry in this bitch? Of course. Your eyes cannot focus on this person. Yeah, it is blurry. Okay. With a male or female, you cannot say, but it hums with the force of both the tracks and repels you. You set, feel a sense of amusement as its regard settles upon you. You speak with O, it says. You have tasted the truth in form of. Machine lubricant. You contemplated the totality of human existence. Speak quickly and true. The world slows around you. This being has no mind to speak of. Where there should be thoughts, you instead sense only a deep, endless hole threatening to swallow your own mind. Who are you? 
I'm, oh, you might call me an ultra terrestrial, though I'm far more from from beyond space, behind time, above your comprehension. Your mind has chosen this form for me, and I'm content to exist in this structure. But know that I exist also outside of your subjective experience. Some might describe me as a superpositional extraction of fundamental universal laws made tangible. You're an asshole. It gestures languidly and, you, languidly, and you understand perfectly. I'm aware and made flesh, a letter at least, a concept covered in a false skin, infinitely malleable, essentially unknowable. What does it mean to be a word? I was, am, will be, I see into the infinite past, into the illimitable future. When the cosmos are the new sea of light, I saw it. When the mechanism winds to a sad and creaking end, I will weep. At the moment of the great wings of death and close creation, I am the last vestige of dust, fr frozen, forever perfected. What are you doing here? I'm here to see the final attempt at entry by the adversaries. I'm here to offer a vision to Leto. This guy is intense. You say this is the final attempt at entry by the adversaries? The adversaries thought to peel through reality should devour this world as they have others. They have never lost. This world is their first taste of defeat. Within themselves, the in course of their victims begin to stir. The adversaries will cease to exist in a meaning, any meaningful form within a millennium if they are stopped here. This is an inflection point. If the warriors, warriors here succeed, the adversaries will not rise again for an aeon. So it is written. Okay. So you offer a vision to Leto? She is prescient. She is the mother of empires. The adversary's presence has polluted her vision, and she is strayed from the page. I'm here to reunite her with the truth. I do not intervene where the story was true, and so it is true, and so it, this is not an intervention. The vision will have come when you have left the city. Okay. Where did you come from? You will not understand. Let me sl show you. It's eyes wide and expanded to fill the room. Your vision, your consciousness, and you tumble into a starry immensity. Swirls of nebulae twist and knot in the hearts of these cellular clusters roar hungry vortices. You tumble helplessly into a myriad of them at once, torn apart and reformed in an instant. A being of pure light and will, uh... You find yourself standing in the fifth eye again. Your nose is running and tears streak your cheeks. You act them away numbly and realize your hand is streaked with blood. Took one damage to health pool. Currently gained one intellect pool. Maximum intellect pool is now 11. Okay, I'll trade that. Too much information, too much knowledge. Had to show you more the enemies that bind you together would have failed. Alright, farewell. A moment. None here will know of our conversation. None will know its nature. None see me. None will they recognize any sign of me. Even in this remarkable place, they cannot know. But I give you a gift, cast off and God and man. For yours is a true story. It is welcomed into the world. It was born from desire and will end. But no, I do not tell your fortune. Light envelops you when you open your eyes. Oh, it's gone. Permanently gained four health pool. Mac health pool is now 27. Okay. Look. It's not the best thing, but like, we got an intellect pool. We ended up... Plus three to health pool permanently. I'm calling that a thing done. I'm saying that's that's a thing. That counts as one. One more and we out this episode. We done. Ghostly woman. You draw her closer, but the wispy form of the woman in the booth does not clarify. You can hardly discern the details of her ghostly face. And you hear a chorus of whispering female voices that swarm around her like chance moths. Study her face more carefully. You peer more closely at her. She takes no notice of you. Her features are those of a teenage woman, leaving childhood behind. Anamnesius, your memory sparks faintly. These cliffs look familiar to you. Wait, they're familiar because they were the fashion in Sagas Cliffs nine centuries ago. And your mind has dredged that association from its depths. depths. Okay, so she's a nine century old ghost. Let's listen. The whispers brush against your mind just below the level of conscious thought. You hear them, but not with your ears. You can only make snatches of the wizards in your mind. You killed me, created me, never wanted to die. Uh, who are you? He's been ignoring you, but without a transitional state, her face is suddenly and fiercely focused on yours. Another flicker, and her hands wrap around your throat. Ghost or not, her fingers are very real, and they're choking the life from you. 
I love when one of my options is just let the ghost strangle you. Does anybody else have a bonus? You are companion now have edge in one of your stat pulls. Granting you a discount on using one of your points. Each level of edge grants one free effort, boosting your minimum chance of success. Using your ability edge to reduce the activation cost first, and you'd have to report to use your effort. So. He's got an edge to might, so I can do that. Oh, 90% and it failed. Her fingers dig deeper. She's not just crushing your trachea. She's tearing your throat out. You took and crawl, drowning on your blood, but she is latched inside you. The last thing you see is her rage, twisted face, game three XP. I can't. Can't die. Well then. Okay. Look. This tavern might not have been the best idea. This this is the most insane tavern ever created. <laughs> can I can I map how big is this place? Okay, not that big. Uh what is the machine? The air is warm next to this machine and you get dizzy whenever you go near it. Alright, let's try talking again. It's the same ghostly woman who strangles you, but the fury is gone from her face, replaced with confusion. She looks around, her gaze falls in the large machine and lingers there. Finally, she notices you. She steps forward, a hit of trepidation in her eyes. Where are we? Do you know? Scan thoughts. How do I know that machine? It frightened me, and I don't know why. I think... We're in the labyrinth, the construct of my mind. Of your mind, yet it feels familiar to me. So it's around again, frowning. Even though it feels familiar, I recognize almost nothing in it. Perhaps it is your mind after all. I do remember one thing. I was angry, enraged. There are, I don't know how, but there are women like me born throughout the city repeatedly against their will. My memories are flitting back to me like flies. What drove them away? What do you mean? They are compelled into existence. She bites her lip, uncertain, then she knows. I'm just a memory. Something is forcing my memory into the minds of women throughout the city. I'll remember that. Oh, there we go. She takes your hand in hers. It is wrong, I don't know how, but she looks away, lost in her own thoughts. When she turns back to you, there is a more certainty in her voice. Find them. The women becoming like me are already me. Maybe I'll remember more. Maybe, maybe we can do something. How do I find these women? They're in the real world, in Sagas. You may have even met them without realizing it. I only have vague impressions of them. I know that one of them is a leader. She sacrificed much of her life and gained, and so gained life in return. She actually had to clear it. I'm sorry, but I cannot tell you more than that. You know any more impressions, do you? No. Oh, one of them offers joy and sorrow for coin. Her family is not her own. It's borrowed, I think. Another one. One of them is dead. Yet a piece of her lives. Find that piece. I don't know. I know that one of them was a leader. Are we, are we back through? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, how, how do I get out of this? Oh, okay. That's my little dimension door. I'm glad you came out of that door. The thing just showed up. I didn't know what to expect. Do you know who that woman is? Don't know anything about that one. That way is blocked. It's not surprising, really. It's your mind, not mine. She most likely is just a lacuna, a construct of your buried memories. Either that, or she's a reflection of somebody you met in real life. Whoever or whatever she is, she probably isn't real. You're the only one with that distinction, and me by extension. Um, or should I do now? Or, okay. Anything changed? Not out of this. Look around, it's your mind. Alright, I think we're ready to go. Farewell. I'm ready. Alright. This, like, chamber in my mind is gonna keep growing, I guess. I'm gonna add, like, people to it. That's interesting. It's a cool way to do, like, the. 
RPG home base thing. You come too from having your throat ripped out. Let's try this guy. Is this guy going to be as crazy as the last two people? No signature feature of this tall, vaguely awkward man with the yellow shirt he wears. He seems desperate to fade back into the scenery. When he sees you notice him, he gives you a faint, uncomfortable grin. Lore mystical. Something about him seems off, as if he were a flicker in the air, or strangely two-dimensional. He does not seem to emit a sense of presence at all. Who are you? Aaron called Isig. I'm not not here. Can you tell me anything more about yourself? No, this is like a dream to me. Can you tell me anything about the people here? He shakes his head as if terrified to meet your gaze. Let's try again. Can you tell me anything about the people here? Okay, no. What can you tell me about this place? Nothing. Why can't I sense you? Skist. The yellow shirt fades away. Then the skin, muscle, and bone raises a vaguely humanoid sh shimmer. I am Yusig, Aaron. Transmental projection from a distant past. What is this tavern? Holy shit! This Abby Close form, this is not the truth of me. Trapped in this body, but I am not this. What's an Abacos? A ghost transmental. It feeds. I only I only watch and learn. Where are you from? Distant past Apox ago. Tuning through time to see future overshot. Maybe next visit. Can you affect this reality? Only words. Nothing touches. Only ideas. No physical energy conveyed. How did you get here? When casting through time, saw a light. Drawn to it. Civilized thought. Admiring psychics. Ah. Well, that. That is interesting. Yeah. So maybe there, there's like some crazy aspect to this tavern. Talk to me, Clarion. Maybe I should have talked to, like, the first person before I went... Oh, did I miss a person here? I guess I missed a person. Jeez. This young woman wears finely polished armor, paces back and forth relentlessly on the walkway. Her long hair is lustrous and healthy, and her whole form is due to wholesome vitality. When she sees you, she raises her voice in greeting. Welcome, friend, to the Fifth Eye. She strides closer to me to speak more softly. You come at an exciting time. I have been trying to convince some veteran warriors of their eminent suitability to join the endless battle. So far they've rebuffed me, but perhaps I, you can succeed where I have failed. What? Okay. Tell me about yourself. I'm Clarion. Seek star warriors, brave souls, fight in the endless battle, hold back the advance of the enemy. Okay. Can you tell me about the endless battle? Much as it sounds, it stems from a rift between the changing god. Ooh. And one of his offspring, and has endured for hundreds of years, raging over the same battlefields using the deadliest technology of the ancients. The landscape is scarred and pitted beyond recognition. The walls between dimensions are thin there. Every day, horrors cross into our world. Worse in recent years, the struggle has expanded. Nearby settlements founded to provide material support for the combatants are existing there long before the two sides came to rage at their borders, have been engulfed by the spreading chaos. It's not too late to change the course of the battle. If only warriors of proven metal would join the fight, that's why I'm here. That's why I beg for your help. A glorious conflict. So many have grown stronger in its wake. Why are the people of this land obsessed with making everyone stronger? Whose side are you recruiting for? The Changing Gods. He has always been the patron of Sagas Cliffs. Perhaps we would not exist for his not for his lives and his castoffs. Certainly we would not be as we are. But that's not the only reason. The Changing God's forces have allied with the towns and villages of the Virksulian Ver Waste. Virksulian Waste. We seek to prevent the endless battle from expanding beyond its borders, growing in size once again. The enemy has attempted to sweep across the plains before. They tricked the Changing God allies centuries ago, destroyed an army of Sandites, and took half the settlement in the Waste. We won't let them do it again. Who's the enemy? The armies of the first cast off. Oh. They have never been friends with the people of Sagas Cliffs. The first castle was long dead, but still her forces hold a grudge against her sire and his patron city. Okay. I help you while I get a reward? Of course, I'm not a wealthy woman, but I have allies in the city who are. The more veterans you can convince to join the battle, the more you will be paid. Can you tell me anything about the veterans you hope to recruit? They have fought in countless wars and emerged victorious. They have made decisive forays that turned entire wars. They are clever, thought, clever thoughtful, and though I know only their reputation, 
the third inversion, for instance, saw them reach into a new dimension, and I won't bore you with the details, but they were integral in the offensive that would have changed the course of that conflict. Why are you trying to recruit the veterans? Perhaps they're tired of war. Conflict shapes them, us all. It sharpens us, makes us stronger than we ever thought we could be. If you hide from it, you'll never know what you might become, or worse. It'll be easy prey for those who are stronger or crueler than you. She clutches her shoulders. The veterans have grown tired and complacent. I want to help them recapture what they lost. No, I want to make them grow even greater than they were. Um... I'll say I'll help. I'm not. No, I don't know if I will. You have my gratitude. A generous reward. If you can see it in this friend. At the bar, you see Leto, the woman clad in desert robes. Behind the bar, Furiak at the table there, Ziobi. With Ziobi, you see Ther the Boros. He is older but has great experience. And then the crowning piece, Dama. He is their leader. Okay. Fine. The other dude was talking about Leto. Though this woman's face is young, she's been beaten hard by the sun. She wears a tight-fitting skin suit under loose desert robes. Her eyes are deep and unsettling black, with no whites to be seen. Occasional streaks of light race across them, flashing in the shadows of her hood like stars plummeting from the sky. I am Leto. I saw you are coming. Now you are here. Leto's mind is unscrutable. unscrutable. Your thoughts reflect at, back at you like from a thousand angles, like shining a light into a mirrored ball. Um, hmm. This is what I'm more interested in. How'd you know I'd be coming? Skins and lives weave together in a tapestry. Your thread glows and emerges from the sky, and great darkness follows in your wake. I've seen you where you go that is beyond my powers. What can you tell me about you? To the northeast in the middle of the Lost Sea, there's a small town called Jabroa. Dwarfed by the magnificence of the oasis of Mrajali, Jerboa is a poor town dependent on the discarity of his neighbor. She nods to the bartender and he refills her drink, floating a bottle through the air without touching it. I was born in the slums, the slums, the Jibra, residents of the city, would sometimes tour our ghetto. One of them saw in my eyes and declared me touched by their god, Nikul. They taught me the deep secrets of their church and showed me how to comprehend the tapestry in my mind. But one day I saw a light flare in Sagas Cliffs. Through the city and mine suffer hostilities. I knew that I must brave those dangers, for I saw the darkening storm. I see the futures. I will not be able to return home, but I arrived in time to aid Dama in his struggle against the adversaries. For a time I was able to read the strands to help our team prepare against the adversaries' attacks, but they learned to cloak themselves against me. And all I could see of their intent was a generalized darkness. I would have little use against the adversaries now, but I remain to help against other foes. Uh, so many questions. Okay, let's let's just jump to this. I mean, it's super interesting. She stares at you, her mouth opening slightly, her eyes flicker across the bar, landing on no one in particular. I have not yet received the vision, and a mother, me? She shakes her head. I'm barren, I will give no life. She pauses, her hands are shaking. I see only a stain when I look at myself, nothing more. A miasma occludes my vision of myself. Okay. What about my companions? Uh, Calisthes? You turn to her head and settle engagements, Calisthes. You were in many realities, singularity seeker. In some, you destroy yourself. In others, you triumphant over ashes, or you sublime yourself in yourself. Glittering possibilities, few probabilities. Can you tell me the steps that lead to my destruction? What I do to succeed? Your future shifts even as you ask the questions. Character is super cool, Calisthes. The sisters to your right seek advantage. The ones to your left compromise. You are the edge of the blade. Your choices are yours. And your future echoes through all realities. Maybe not all. I included that. All you need to do is step. Your trafficking and supposition in simile. What makes you any better than a hedge witch procrastinating in lock and trails? What makes me different? I actually see the future, Calisthenes. 
Your path is fraud. You're your own worst enemy. What about Eridus? Yes, tell me about me. Oof. She frowned at him and poked her finger off the golden glow that surrounds him. She snatched her finger back as if burned. The future is bright but short. After a moment, he burst out. Was that it? I expected to hear something about frightening Sarax or leaping heroically onto a flying vehicle and wrestling controls with a savage pilot. I do like to fly, you know. I'm a very good pilot. It's the kind of thing I wanted to hear about. Faintest touch of a sad frown at the corner of her mouth is her only response. Okay. All right, let's go here. What the Making hell? A note. Oh! Okay. Let's scroll back up. I'm looking for warriors to join Clarion in this battle. She thinks she'd be a valuable ally. Dominic is here, is he not? I follow his lead. He believes one of our old foes is still present in the city, and if he believes it, I do as well. I will not abandon him should he need me. All right. Cool. Naturally. Uh, I guess we'll talk our way around. The bartender is a tall, pow powerfully built man with a nut brown skin and a bushy beard. He radiates strength and confidence. He moves with speed, no necessary, but remains almost motionless most of the time, like a predator waiting to leap. Yet when he prepares, a, when he prepares a drink, he doesn't touch a thing. His brow furrows slightly, and the bottles and glasses lift by themselves. Welcome to the fifth eye, friend. I'm Feriok. What can you tell me? Fifth eye. Fifth eye is a bar for psychics. <laughs> At least it is now. In the prior worlds, near as we can tell, it was an old pumping station. All these pipes lead down to some reservoirs deep beneath the city and pump whatever is in there in the Versa Wars up here. Anyway, some damn fool started drinking from the from the pipes, and some other fool started in two. Some of them died, but some got drunk as hell. After a few whiles, vague enough for you, they got pretty good at figuring out which ones were safe and which weren't. That's when they figured out they started making money off the place. We're using psychic slot here because the building dampens out the psychic noise of the city. Drinks help, too. Perry can say that he's only involved in the delivery of the drinks, rather than their creation, given his skills. This is only right and proper. He throws a hand across his forehead. I've been blinded by this desert-dwelling interloper. So this is a bar for psychics. What does that mean? It means this is a place where psychics can unwind, get away from the city, get away from the noise. You must like to be psychic. Let me paint a picture. Imagine every time you go to sleep, someone kind of starts screaming in your ear. Or the addicts in the room start whispering about how they want to burn. Or they might tell you their secret names and to make them float and dance at your command. <laughs> Maybe every person you meet is like a house with all its doors and windows thrown open, and you can't help but look in to plunder their secrets. And underneath it all, you hear their silent judgments, the truths they hide even from themselves. He pauses to concentrate on a floating cloth as it wipes a mug clean. The mug then places itself on a rack. Folks think that it's a blessing to have these powers. Sometimes it really is, especially when you can join your friends and make something great, but it can be hard, hateful. You never can tell you're going over the edge of insanity. I'll remember Let's that. Let's go. People asking this. Nah, no way. This bar is my life and I've done my time. I've got no interest in fighting for people I don't know. For cause I don't believe in you, go right ahead and count me out. You know what? Maybe you should risk Clarion to take a recruiter act somewhere else if you want to, I mean. But really, what you're doing and what you're thinking is pretty offensive. There we go. Naturally. Something to turn this around. Let's see. Almus the Soul Keeper. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's talk here. I have an update. Talk to Fairy Eye. He ain't going nowhere. He's not been, not been the same since his last battle. His power seemed to have changed, but he has now become noticeably stronger. No great loss. Talk about something else. Let me talk to the other veterans Let's first. Go. This man mind is sealed from you, like trying to read the thoughts of a book that's been glued to it. Yeah, I've got that one, the psychic tavern. This man is old and strong, his face blind with years of brutal experience. His face is aquiline, his nose sharp, he has a broad brimmed hat, his voice is a low rasp. I'm Therabos. Tell me your story, make it a good one. Um, I was born falling from the sky, and now I'm trying to repair a chamber that will stop a nightmare. <laughs> he watches you intently as you speak. When you finish, he nods sharply. You're telling the truth. A lot of people embellish, or they lie outright. Try to pretend they're more than they are, so people remember them as giants. More often than not, they just end up looking ridiculous. 
He pats you on the shoulder. You've given me a rare treat, thanks. What do you want? Can't help you with the chamber, maybe there's something else. Uh, what about the adversaries? I don't want to talk them up. It's important to understand they're not unbeatable, they're not immortal, they're tough, hell yeah, but they can be stopped. That said, what are they? Fair spirits, beings of pure thought, that's what they are, except they're more like living hate. Every nightmare of fear that you can't escape, a vortex of despair. That's why we fight, because of their poison. I know this this guy's voice is terribly inconsistent. I keep forgetting that I'm doing it. Um, sure. What about you? I'm the brains of the operation. Yes, there's a lazy hand around the table. Without me, they lose the thread of their inner thoughts and spend all their time wandering in dreams. We're just turning away from your nagging. He dipped his friend a drink, a wink. It's that nagging that sharpens my word, Dama. And though I admit my words are probably getting duller every second I spend talking to you. I'm, let's call me a warrior of language. Words are my weapons and my treasures. That'd be pretty sound to you, but to me, through the tools that pry open your imagination and leave you vulnerable to my friends here. I build pictures, set the scenes, and create mazes in your mind. He takes a careful sip. I'm also the last person in the world to know the lost words of Kra. <laughs> He closes his eyes tightly and when he opens them again you see worms of light dancing in his eyes. They're gone again in his next blink. They're a weaponized beam. I thought that sticks in your head. A tune you can't get rid of. I'm saying the echoes of your mind till it drives you mad and melts your brain. You don't have to talk about this, Therabos. She turns to you. It's eating away at him. He has a compartmentalized, but he says he can feel it running away at his mind. I can feel the power in you. Can you help him? Uh, yeah, I can help you. What can you tell me about the words of Kra? His face grows more somber, if that's possible. Those are the words of ruin from an ancient civilization. I heard the story from a dying Nevision before I rested the last, last words from his mind. It goes like this. The school arcs agreed that if age had found deep truths about the world, and they stumbled across these words, they read to the knowledge down and sealed the words away with the strongest warnings they could find, and then they killed themselves so they wouldn't infect their kind. Problem was, they didn't count the writing sticking through the ages. Some skist brain fool ignored the warnings on the bindings, read the words, and spilled them out into a civilization that had been grown up in that spot over the millennia. Eight rulers of Kwa, eight words, and a continent expanding emp empire fell. People bleeding from the eyes with hatred in their hearts. Survivors tried the scholar who'd released the words, buried him in stone. The words were lost again. A Nevahin, a hero, and found the imprisoned scholar. Tried to wipe away the knowledge he had spoken and removed him from, and removed him from the world. Had the dead never been stuck there, it would have seen the dust itself were writing the words of Craw on the floor in the wind. But it was too late. The words had invested his mind. I found the words. I burned them from the world, trapped them in my maze, in my mind, and they're near the exit. So you're the dude who did it. All right, tell me about it. What do you do about it? Sorry. Well, I could always kill myself. Honestly, I don't think anything else could carry it. The alternatives are too horrific to bear. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm awesome, and I'm assuming this will give me some sort of bonus. So I'm gonna, t I'm gonna offer. Um, he tilts his glass towards them. I love my colleagues here, but can they handle the words of Crawl? I don't think so. Right there, right now, I've got them locked in a mental construct. No one has even the slightest idea how to build. I got, I have a space in my mind. I, I got it. I got you, bro. Really? And how is it that you're a better custodian for the words of Kra than I am? I'm more than strong enough to use your psychic ability to read me. Oh, dear God. Cool. I failed. He focuses on you, you feel something like the skittering of spiders across your mind. They plunge aside so that you sense his presence in the labyrinth, and you can feel his mind recoil. No, no, I don't think so. It's not just your mind in there. Many minds share that space, and honestly, I don't trust the old guard the word. I have a solution right now. Figures, what do you want to know? Um, Making sure. Now, while Diamond's convinced one of the adversaries still lives. No, I've got other concerns, maybe later. Okay. 
working our way around. And yes, the episode is running long again. No one was surprised. This woman's face seems timeless. Neither young, ordinary, old or young, unblemished, but somehow not perfect. Her dark and wavy hair flows like a cloud above her shoulder, cloud to her shoulders. When she speaks, her voice is musical, almost artificial. I don't know if I can do this. I'm Zyobi, and you are? She concentrates, fingers pressing to her temples. Her two table aides start smiling. She pulls them away. I'm not even, I'm not actually a mind reader like these two. Just the Joker. So you're not going to guess who I am? I don't know who you are, but I can tell where you're from. Tell me, are you from the area? A small hamlet? Slightly isolated, but still within the broader Sagas Protectorate? Somewhere near Arvinwood, perhaps? I actually don't know. I was born a falling star. Uh, what? <laughs> How do they know the language here? You seem particularly observant. Your voice, your inflections, your mannerisms. They speak of someone whose upbringing is based on an older version of the Sagas Cliffs dialect. This suggests an isolated Aldea or enclave of some sort. Does she claim not to be a mind reader? Zaiwi's mind is impenetrable. She might as well be one of the bartender's pumps. Tell me more about yourself. Hi, I'm Zaiwi. I hail from the western reaches of the Clock of Kala, near Methunius. Oh my goodness, I keep clicking, right clicking. Okay. I've had the opportunity to serve with my fellows here in a number of disturbances, though if you wish to hear more about these conflicts, you must speak with Dama. I'm their support, their backup if they need be, their physical offense. Looking for warriors? I'm through with war, finished, but I want nothing more to do with conflict. I've served my time. My colleagues might help you, but I refuse. Don't ask again. Okay. What about this place? More about the fifth eye. Okay. Wait, okay, no. It's the fifth eye, where the psychics have been silenced, where Saga's cliffs have been coming for generations to protect ourselves from the noise of the city. Life is easier when you're among friendly people, those are your own kind. Though not everyone here is technically one of us, some people see, you see here manifestations of our minds. Some of them are called here by our minds, some have come from other dimensions even. I have a challenge for you. Huh, okay. I have a challenge for you. One of the five of us who owns this bar's projection. Talk to the other veterans of the Psychic Wars and see if you can figure out which of us is the projection. You can ask us each of us only once, so make your questioning count. You the Psychic Projection? Me? No. No, indeed. In fact, I'm protecting him now. It's my power that makes the projection possible. If I was you, I'd focus on, hmm, physicality. Best of luck? Okay. Now we have a whole different issue here. Okay, can I ask you a question? Zyber says one of you is a psychic projection. Is it you? Psychic projection? That's an interesting way to word it. Is he? He tilts his head towards Zyobi. Couldn't you say we're all psychic projections in one way or another? Put it this way. Are you always how I picture you? Does your behavior change based on my thoughts? That's a good question. Huh. Yeah, depending on the image, I might change my behavior to improve your opinion. You're influenced by my thoughts, but are my thoughts of the world, the whole of you? They are the near my imagination in the converse. Say we're all one consciousness, subjecting, subjectively experiencing yourself, and that means we're all each other's and our own psychic projections. We're also autonomous, eh? At least to some degree. You exist when I'm not paying attention to you. Pretty sure I have no need to imagine someone like you. We might as well say we're all interconnected at a fundamental level. That our thoughts and actions have effects on each other. It might not be reality. That is the truth. But we each have a perception of a truth. It's a guiding story that we use to live our lives. It's not reality for everyone, but it's reality for us. It's our story. Oh no, Zyobi. Theroboros. Theroboros is getting started again. 
Hush you, I'm lecturing. He turns back to you. If you don't understand reality, we understand stories. So maybe our best gauge for how to experience each other is through the stories we know and the words we use when we tell those stories. What I'm really telling you is that I'm not telling you which direction. Maybe you learn some of our tales and you get to know the truth. A truth, anyway. I, know other people. I can, but I won't. Talk to them yourself. They have a piece of wisdom they carry in themselves, and I won't dishonor them by telling their stories for them. I can eulogem, eulogize them, but every story will start. He's a warrior, selfless and self-absorbed, knowing about themselves so they can help the world. But they're all more than that. See so if you get them from a different perspective than me. What about you again? Okay, you're the word warrior. Okay. Natural. Let's talk to you. The wispy mustache on this pudgy, middle-aged man would be almost comical if it weren't for his deep and despairing eyes. They are the eyes of a man who has passed the gates of alien hells and returned, though not necessarily whole. His fingers tightly wrapped around some fine glassware are strong and slim. A musician's fingers or a strangler's? You can't read his thoughts at all. You might as well try to read the thoughts of a wall. Before you open your mouth to speak, he says, what is that place in your mind? It's a labyrinth? I would add a question mark. A labyrinth? He raises his eyebrow and leans back in his seat. That's a novel construction. He starts ticking items on his fingers. I've seen people construct psychic fortresses, cathedrals, graveyards, hellscapes, and vortices from, from which no life escapes. All dramatic places, all powerful and foreboding, but a labyrinth? Well, that's a whole different construction. That speaks to Gunning and Kyle. Gunning and Kyle. Cunning and Guile. Do you mind if I take a quick look? Seems like a strange thing to carry and, do, and not know anything about. Sure. My thanks. Though it's not often the wisest choice to let strangers enter your mind, I'll not do you any harm. Might help even. He smiles to take a sting out of his words. Ready? You breathe in and suddenly you feel you are a moat tucked inside a gigantic prism with eyes peering in at you from all around. You are held tightly in an enormous fist. You are a flimsy piece of glass held up to light, yet somehow it is not utterly terrifying. His words come to you as from a distance. A shared space, such depths, such twists, it builds itself around your experiences, around those who you share it with you. Shared spaces are occasionally dangerous, so I sharpened a part of your mind. I didn't probe deeply. This would be an excellent battleground. If you learn a 40, 40 you could trap it within your mind, you could destroy it. Oh, introductions, yes. Gain one intellect pool. Nice. Test the glass down. Dime Dama. Dama of the Bloom. He pinches the bridge of his nose, his eyes tightly shut, and you feel a gentle, powerful presence surround your consciousness. I have a request for you. It might seem strange, but you have an interesting topography to your mind and might be able to help us. The fifth eye is home to psychic veterans. We fought an incursion of nightmares, I suppose. Nightmares slithering into the city's shared dream space, eating minds and leaving husks behind. We call them the adversaries. We burn them out and cauterize the wounds through which they infected our reality. But I can't shake the nagging feeling that one of them survived and waits to strike. I trust my intuition. And now it's telling me to ask for your help. I'm happy to help. Making a note. He breathes with eye of relief. Thanks, I feel the adversary. I know it's here. It's close. It's watching us, but it's hiding its presence. And I fear it'll strike when our guard is down. It may well be even in the fifth eye even now. He shrugs absolutely. Sadly, our fifth eye is blind. He jerks the thumb at the bartender. It might be that our foe has blinded us, but it might not have shielded itself from you. Look for it and tell me more if you find something unusual. Making a note. I keep right clicking on accident. I don't know what's happening. It's always on that the clarion. I've got more pressing matters close to the adversary. Remember, I'm not going to ever actually deal with that nightmare. Let me ask about the projection first. Me? Those reels they come. Could projection do this? He pauses. Oh, he stuffed his belly, sorry. Come to think of it, Tyree probably could make one do that and make it sound right, too. She's good. How would you test whether a psychic emanation was real? Touch him. He doesn't move, and your finger sinks into his flesh. He grins. Satisfied? Wow, this is interesting, because like, they've all got different perspectives. 
The bro said I should pay attention to your stories. I hate to say it, but he's right for once. What do the others say about me? Do I even have any interesting stories? Anything about growth, journey, change? I'm not sure I do have any good stories. I'm the same as I've always been. Sadly, more's the pity. That will be physicality. Here's a hint. He reached out and clasped you on the shoulder, his fingers holding tight. Projections play with your expecta on your expectations, but they're pierced easily. Good luck with it. I don't have any more questions. All right. I have to have something else. Maybe I have a lead. I'm here for your help, friend. Tell me your suspicions. I'll see if I can confirm or relay them for you. There was a strange, ghostly woman. Ah, yes. While she's unpredictable and possibly dangerous, she's not an adversary. We tried to remove her before she always returned. Rather than risk any damage, we just stay out of her way. I advise you to do the same. The man of the yellow shirt who changed the shape. Ah, the poor lost soul is not the adversary. He's been trapped in the form of Akabos, but not an Akabos himself. Do not fear him. Pity him. Talk to O. I sensed O's presence and reached out to it in my mind. It's not an adversary. It's, well, I don't have to describe it, but that's easy. Because O probably won't destroy you. Probably. Could it be Clarion? He burst out laughing. I understand that her devotion to destruction might make her seem like a monster, but like the rest of us, she's merely human. All right, never mind. What can you tell me about adversaries? Good question, better if I show you. He closes his eyes and you feel an insistent nudge in your mind that your vision goes black, replaced with a nightmare. You see a void, oblivion, a place where black stars hang and shriek with a formless rage. Violet lightning arcs to the sky, and you witness enormous masses of pushing the raging against each other. Streams of consciousness rocket from them, and they scream out of need, desire, hatred. Other emotions arise with these, with some mental energy that curl like steam. They brush your consciousness with a touch be slimed with the unknowable hungers of an alien mind. These luminous wisps quest through invisible cracks in dimensional walls. New worlds, unsuspecting minds, brilliant lights unfolded in the adversaries to king orbits, imprisoned stars winking out forever. They came through the bloom, shining in tenebrous at the same time, he whispers. They offered games, riches, and promises for the future. I felt their passage and was afraid, and I hid my mind from their questing touch. I felt them reach for me, and I cowered in my shell. Kyle, lays a hand on Dharma's shoulder. Those who didn't hide saw the lure, and they were drawn to that unwinnable mental game, attracted by the light of the adversary's minds. They followed their own dreams into madness, psychics and normal people alike. The ruin of the city's minds was... She shakes her head. You were wise enough to see the beyond the lure and into the danger. You couldn't stand against them yourself. You hid. We all did. Not all. Some stood. They played the game and got cracked like glow globes. I felt them die, and their spirits sucked into the vortex of atmosphere. You did the right thing, Dom. I've told you that before. Fine, fine. He's waving the words away. But you've seen what the adversaries are like now. Inhuman with no negotiation. Maybe they're communicating with us and we don't understand them, but I tell you, because they're hello, then I don't want anything else to do with them. Those who survived that initial incursion gathered here. We set aside our differences and fought back, but not with our own losses. What are the adversaries? I, I don't know. What we see is in the whole picture. We know that it's an intrusion to our world, maybe just a piece of the creature's physical mater psychic material. Maybe it's a conscious unit on its own, maybe it's self erected But my deepest fear is that every adversary we've seen is the smallest piece of a singular entity, and our push, push back is drawing its attention ever so slowly towards us. If you ever, ever meet one, you'll know why that frightens me so. I gotta just... Actually, wait. Tell me about yourself. Totally they called me of the bloom. I was born there. I knew nothing of the world outside for the longest time. I thought it was normal to play in passages made of gut and tissue, to hide from flavors and diverticula, and to watch visitants staggering in for other worlds. I learned how to read people there, how to understand them. Then one day, I left the bloom and came to the Sagas Cliffs, and world discovered the world was a different place than I thought. A better place. That's why I when I learned to fight. That's why I learned to fight. He gestured at himself. This isn't a warrior's body, of course, not in the usual sense. He smiles. And a great pressure swells in your head in advance just before you can even register alarm. But I'm not the usual. No one in the fifth eye is. We're psychic, psionic seers. Call us mind benders or thought rippers, but we're warriors. We keep the minds of Sagas Cliff safe from threats they don't even imagine. They go crazy if they did, out they're exactly paragons of sanity at the best of times. Okay. 
Yes. Let's come back here. Ask this guy if he's a projection. Thomas said you're blind. Oh. It used to be the spotter for the gang. It means I can sense the presence of the adversaries. Build an attractive playground for them and draw them after me. That's when I face though. He pulls his face all and draws out into himself. It burned me out. It put up my eyes. It burned me out. It put up my... Then he's back to normal, smiling after nothing happened. Oh, that's, that's messed up. Larry every time me to find the psychic projection. Are you the one? Now why would I come out and tell you? And if I always play a game, why should I spoil their fun? Come on, puzzle that. Let me offer a clue. Know your subjects. I guess that's the kind of thing an empath would say, huh? Dama hinted I should touch you. He seems to sent it for a moment. Fine, touch away. It's much as hard than yielding a sin steel. Clean living, he mother mutters. Terrible said should I know about st I should know about stories. And what stories do you want to question? I was the group spotter, an empath. And after I burned out that skill, that's basically all you need to know. So I decided to focus on physicality. She did how's this then? He concentrates momentarily, then bottles and glasses circulate a convoluted pattern around his head. They settle back into place after a moment. How's that for physicality? Alright. I don't think it's Lido, but I want to hear what she has to say. Are you the projection? Who can say what reality is? I see strands of possibility tying the future and past together. Probabilities grow and decrease. Is a small probability a reality? In one universe, it will be in another. It has vanished into the world. It might have been an opportunity for nostalgia or gratitude at avoiding it. I tell you that reality is more than a perception of time. It exists beyond us. What is in the past extends to the future. Touch the threads of the past and you can see their intended shape. Know what it is that you see and you will be able to discern your reality. Ha! What have you been saying, Leto? Only that the one who would crush in reality must know how that reality should behave. I'm not the person you seek. I think she's saying that it's uh, Ziobi is the projection. Which I kind of thought. So I'm going to go with that. Because what the hell. I know it is. It is you. So sorry, it's Feriak. He waves from the bar. Damn. We all know, but she swallows. I'm sorry, this is hard to talk about. I began manifesting him after he was killed. He was our spotter. Oh. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Oh, yeah. That, that makes infinite sense. Oh, my God. All the pieces coming together. That, like, half moment where he ghosted out and he was like, no, my eyes, my eyes. And then, like, came back to normal. Oh, my God. That was, that was obvious. Oh, my God. I guess with the knowledge that he's not, like, I, I didn't think of the fact that he would have been, like, one of them. He's a projection. I was trying to figure out who was, like, totally made up. I didn't think of the fact that he would be a projection of, like, somebody who existed. I began manifesting him after he was killed. He was our spotter, the man who saw the adversaries and lured them to our battleground. But the last adversary, we thought it was ready for us. It caught hold of the lore he offered and followed his mind all the way to reality. It burned. It burned him from the inside. He lured it to us and with his dying will nailed it into place. It was a sacrifice any of us would have made to help no matter who was in that position. He speaks softly as if trying to convince himself. The adversary didn't pay attention to us. He has report our heaviest attacks into it. It was too observed in destroying Feriak, tearing it apart instead of defending itself. As if its first priority was in blinding us instead of preserving itself. We beat it, though. So long as I'm breathing, I'll keep his memory alive. I'll serve drinks and make his bad jokes, and everyone here will feel welcome. It's the least I can do in his name. Uh, in an instant. That sucks. Okay. I think... Oh no, there's more people. Yes. Okay. So, we'll talk to the other people next time. We're gonna resolve this until this person to go. Do an update. She refuses. Wait, no. I've got more update. Everybody said no. You're not wanted here. The veterans want you to leave. 
I've not wanted in many places, yet somehow I never left, except for my own accord. It's a pity I arrived discovered in them. Perhaps they should examine why that is. Do, you, do they fear a new challenge? Fine, answer some questions for me, will you? That was either I expected. What questions do you want to have? Actually, no. Sorry, you gotta go. You want conflict? No, we're, we're switching to him because he got the bonus. For the first time, she was discomforted. Would you? You wouldn't. They have a strict prohibition against physical violence here. They won't let you touch me, would they? She studies your face and shoots a glance at these simple patrons. They are studiously ignoring both of you, though you can feel their focus. Making a note. Aye. All right. If that's how they feel, I'll leave. I don't need any trouble. Please, please accept my apologies. She walks hurriedly to the door, determined not to break into a run. Woo! We shall see. Quest complete. Said quest complete. I'm not gonna. He's not gonna reward me. Even though he's not real. Even though we see the end of that, Clary, I appreciate it. More to the point, we all do. The noise you're putting off it was filling the psychic space in here. So thanks, friend. Also, ah oh, man. Yeah. I'm really mad I didn't guess it was Ferriak. Now that I'm thinking it, like, they gave me so many good hints. Ask, think about the stories. Think about the physicality. He does so much stuff, like, moving around things, even though I could touch him. Oh, my God. How he acts. Oh, never mind. All right, anyway. However, we got... Of course. One quest finished and we got two intelligence pool points otherwise I'm going to call that two things done at the very least so we're going to call that a day somehow still coming in at over an hour oh my god next time we're going to talk to the other couple people in here we're going to resolve his thing and hopefully that'll that won't take that long dear god <laughs> Till then, have a great life, folks. Peace.